Welcome to American Morning. Glad you're with us today. It is Friday, July 8th, and of course, a big day for the shuttle program. For the shuttle program, for the jobs report here in the U.S., but the shuttle program, because that is that is the history-making event of the day, we hope. Allie Velshi is at Kennedy Space Center, where he is. A, they're fueled up, Allie. They're ready to go, but we'll see if it they happens. They are ready to go. In fact, <laughs> we know that there's going to be a lot of news this morning, one way or the other. We are live at Kennedy Space Center right here in Florida. This is an historic day. The counting down, the hours, you can see it there. The, the countdown clock hasn't started going yet, and I'll tell you about that through the course of the show. But this is the countdown to the last launch ever of the Space Shuttle Atlantis, last launch ever of a space shuttle. It is truly the end of an amazing era. Four astronauts will make history today. One million people from around the world are expected to gather in the greater area here to witness it. If the weather holds out, they're here. They're ready to go uh, in case uh, in case this uh, shuttle takes off. Now, of the people who've been on the shuttle, only 355 of the very elite have flown the shuttle in its 30-year history. We'll be bringing you every step of the final four astronauts, uh, the, the steps that they take this morning. Now, at 6.56 Eastern, less than an hour from now, the astronauts will get a briefing on the weather situation. That is always the wild card in the summer in Florida. If all's well, then at 7.06, one hour from now, they suit up. An hour after that, at 8.06, they will step onto the launch pad, there it is, and board Space Shuttle Atlantis for its final flight. Then, at 11.26 Eastern, again, all of this weather contingent, the shuttle's main engines will fire and liftoff will occur. John Zarella has seen many of these. This one's different, John. Oh, boy, it really is. And welcome to my world. Thank you, Alex. sir. It's good to be in your <laughs> it's world. It's your first time. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's going to be one exciting day today. Hopefully, they get it off the ground. But you're right. It's the weather. It seems to be the weather most times right. here. Uh, no exception today. Uh, you know, and in fact, well, you know, the astronauts themselves, they're up, they're having their breakfast. Yep. They're going through that right now. Uh, and you can see out there, we're looking at uh, the uh, the superstructure around the shuttle Atlantis. But the weather was pretty wild around here yesterday That's while right. you were flying in. We actually had some lightning strikes within just a quarter of a mile, third of a mile of the launch pad. Uh, so late yesterday afternoon and into the evening, before they started the tanking, they actually had to have the teams out there walking the pad, walking the area to make sure. And you can see it here on the yeah, video, those yeah, lightning strikes. Absolutely, to make sure that Nothing was uh, damaged. there were no issues yep. and no problems. And fortunately, there were Explain none. this to me, because yeah. people have asked me this. This is a robust, hardy vehicle that has traveled millions of miles in space. Why does a little lightning and, and, and rain and wind on Earth affect the takeoff? Well, lightning, the electronics, everything on board the shuttle, you get those supercharged right. currents that right. can go through and you could have yourself a real problem. Uh, so they've just got to check and make sure there are no issues that uh, have developed with any of the sensitive equipment on board. You know, George Diller has been here since 1979. He was right. hired for the shuttle program. George Diller is going to do the final commentary uh, on the liftoff th this morning. Uh, and uh, I asked George yesterday, I said, hey, have you thought about what you're going to say on this historic moment? Something that has to occur to me, and it comes at very unlikely times when I'm not doing something related to the Space Center or to the launch. My best thinking on liftoff lines comes in the shower or thoughts while shaving, you know, and that's just about what happened on this one. Yesterday. <laughs> Yesterday. <laughs> So, at any rate, now so far I haven't changed my mind. I think maybe one might change one word, but so far I, I think I'm there. So it was actually Wednesday when George came up with his final, with his lines for what he's going to say on liftoff. And his very first one that he did, he was commentator on, was the shuttle Atlantis. Right, okay. So, so, it, so it'll be interesting to see what yeah. In our yeah. business, by the way, we call that a deep tease. You're going to have to watch TV to find out what he actually says. Exactly. All right, John and I are going to be together with some fantastic people uh, this morning. Uh, stay with us, uh, but we'll be here all morning. Uh, fueling of this uh, shuttle, by the way, began on time. As John mentioned, the launch team closely monitoring the weather the entire time. Speaking of the weather, Chad Myers with us here at Kennedy uh, Space Center, keeping an eye on it for, this, uh, for us this morning. He is live at the Visitor Center, where we're going to have a whole lot of people who've worked very, very hard to get there and watch it from there. Good morning, Chad. 
Good morning, Allie. They started showing up and the doors opened at 2 a.m. The entire field over there full of people already waiting for it. But something that we've seen this morning that we did not see at all yesterday, there are breaks in the cloud cover. We saw nothing of the sky yesterday. It was a gray, rainy day. Now, there are showers on the radar. And the radar picture just shows most of the rain kind of out near Tampa and to the west of us. There, that big red dot is where we are right now. We get to keep that shower activity back off to the west. We get more clearing here. The shuttle goes off today, even though it could be, and they're still saying 70% chance of a no-go with weather. Hey, you know what? That means there's still a 30% chance. And you buy a lottery ticket where there's a, almost no chance anyway. So this could be the day with the sun breaking out. It rained all day yesterday. Maybe that rain is done for a while. We only need a few minute window and they can launch this bad boy. We'll see if we do. Yeah. And that's what they say, Chad. Everybody I talked to down here. So when I was in New York, everybody was saying 70% chance it's not going to go. And I come down here and everybody says, that means a 30% chance that it is going to go. People are optimists. And I suppose you, to, right. to work for NASA uh, and to be around here, you, you have to operate as an optimist. Chad, we'll be checking in with you through the course of the morning. You cannot but be moved uh, by what it looks like down here. I'm Ali Velshi. Welcome to American Morning. We're live from Kennedy Space Center this morning, where in just a few hours, fingers crossed, we will watch history being made from that platform. That is a live shot of, uh, of the platform where the space shuttle Atlantis is standing by, uh, ready to take off. Joining me now is uh, my friend Leroy Chow. He's an astronaut who flew on three, uh, three shuttle missions, plus one mission on Soyuz. He spent six and a half months on the International Space Station, 229 days in space. Uh, you've done uh, six spacewalks. Right. Boy, you are the astronaut <laughs> every one of us always wanted to be. Uh, but I have to tell you, Leroy, you love it. I love it. We've talked about it right. so many times. But it's chocolate and vanilla. There are some people watching us right now saying, why do we care so much about the space program? What's the big deal? Tell me what the big deal is. Take the astronaut out of you out of this, because you've, you've studied sure. this. What is the big deal? Well, you know, we can always talk about the technological spin-offs and the technical drivers and all that that the space program has done for the United States. But really, it comes down to national prestige. You know, that's why a country gets into the space uh, human spaceflight business. Yeah. Uh, add to that the intangible of, you know, what you're doing to inspire the young people. And I think those two things are the main reasons uh, any country gets into this. And its uh, space shuttle program is no, no, uh, no exception to this and it's a bittersweet day here to watch the last launch is it for you I mean is it absolutely you are there, there's a real sense of sure you know what are you gonna be feeling when that thing takes off which it will what yeah. are you gonna what's gonna be going through your mind well you know it was 17 years ago today that's right. my first launch yeah. uh, and it was lousy weather forecast just like today but uh, we counted down to five and uh, suddenly everything went green and we went ahead and launched uh, you know I came in right at the heart of the shuttle program in 1990 and my first flight was in 94 and, uh, you know, so I grew up with shuttle and, uh, you know, spent my career, bulk of my career flying shuttle. And so it's, it's going to be tough to see it go away. You were a member of uh, what a lot of people won't know, but it's called the Augustine Committee. And it, it, it was really uh, where a decision was kind of made to advise uh, the administration and NASA not to continue with the shuttle program to do something else. What was the thinking? What's the something else? Well, the Augustine Committee, we were charged with coming up with options for the new administration. Right. So we created several option paths and described each one without making a recommendation. Okay. One of those option paths preserved the shuttle. I personally wanted to preserve the shuttle, thought we should keep it flying at a low rate, maybe two flights a year. Unfortunately, that path was not chosen, but uh, we did preserve one and discussed. There's a lot of discussion on how to continue uh, having a human presence in space, uh, launching our own astronauts into space, how to keep that going. So there was a lot of discussion about that and a lot of concern about what we call the gap, the gap between the end of the shuttle program right. and the next capability we don't the know US. what the next thing is. We think it might be Mars. We think it might be an astronaut. We, we think it might be more deep space, space exploration. Meanwhile, this low orbit stuff, which is what the shuttle's been right. doing, which largely have been research missions and missions to the space station and, and sending cargo and, and astronauts back into space, you're actually involved in, in, uh, in one of the companies that's going to be doing commercial spacecraft. Space, that's space right. I'm, I've been doing some work in the commercial area. I'm involved in a company called Excalibur Almaz, and we're working to hopefully provide uh, cargo and crew services to the space right. station and other, other things. But uh, yeah, I mean, one of the sub-options that we included in several of the option paths in the Augustine Committee report included uh, incentivizing commercial space companies to come up with ways to make a commercial case for space and to provide these kinds of services to NASA and to others. And so uh, I'm a big believer in that. And, and you know, it's an open question whether it's going to work. I'm right. hopeful that it will. But, uh, you know, and, and the other part of that is when. 
And the theory is that that frees NASA up to get on to the next mission. Even though we don't have that mission just now, what would you like that next one to be? Where do you well, want to see Ma NASA go? Right. The idea is that we've been sending people to low Earth orbit for 50 years. So the yeah. technology is mature, and it's a matter of creating, seeing if we can create that commercial atmosphere such that the commercial companies can succeed. As for exploration, the uh, space policy that was rolled out last year included what we call the flexible path option. Yep. And that means we're not focusing on one particular destination. We're not saying, hey, we should go to Mars although that's kind of the eventual goal. Right. Uh, but the thing is that uh, we looked at going right to Mars and the cost of such an endeavor was just way too costly to make it credible. And right. so what we thought was, okay, we want to do this sustainably. That is, we don't want to spend a bunch of money, go to Mars, uh, take a picture of the, the flag and the footprints yeah. and then never go back. So we want to explore sustainably. What that means is developing different capabilities. How do you keep astronauts alive and healthy for six plus months right. in deep space? How do you land on a foreign body? How do you, how do you do, you know, do all these kinds right. of things? So you need to go to, you know, we can go to some interesting destinations in the middle. We can go to uh, near Earth objects like an asteroid. Build, build those build up, technologies you know, and expertise. Go back to the moon. All right, they'll right. be using you for that because six and a half months <laughs> on the uh, space station. We're, we're good to have you here, Leroy. Thanks for very much. We're oh, been happy to be watching this with Thanks. you. 30 years after the space shuttle program began, today's launch to the International Space Station will be NASA's 135th and final mission. Special live coverage begins this morning at 10 o'clock Eastern. There you see it in that rocket ship on CNN. 30 minutes past the hour, your top stories now. Shuttle Atlantis fueled up and is now ready for the final launch in the history of the shuttle program. Right now, NASA says there is a 30% chance that the weather will be favorable for a launch today. The astronauts will get a weather briefing, actually, in less than half an hour. In, uh, less than five off, uh, hours, if planned, when shuttle Atlantis lifts off and embarks on the final shuttle mission of history. Here is a beautiful, beautiful live shot of the space shuttle Atlantis. Hundreds and thousands of people have made their way uh, to this area to witness the event. This is the firing room. This is the room from which they will control the launch of the space shuttle Atlantis. Right now, scheduled for 11.26 a.m. Eastern Time. Uh, you're looking at all sorts of shots uh, from the uh, space shuttle program right now. But I want to talk to you about the people, not where we are right now, not on the launch pad, but all of the people, just regular Americans who have come here, uh, up to a million of them, to watch this. Carol Costello uh, is live nearby with, uh, with some of those people. Good morning, Carol. Yes, you're talking to another regular American. That would be me. I'm at Port Canaveral, about 15 miles from the Kennedy Space Center. People have been gathering here for literally days. This is a beach right off of the highway, and all of these people are hoping that the that the, the space shuttle finally lifts off this morning because they'll have a fantastic view from here. Take a look out over the water. You probably can't see it, but. I can see the space shuttle between the trees over the oceans. So when it finally lifts off, it will be one beautiful sight. People have come to this little tiny slip of beach from all over the country. And Ricky, if you turn this way, these people down here are from St. Louis, Canada. You're from Orlando, Tampa, <laughs> Pittsburgh. <laughs> I love that. Where are you from? Orlando. These people are from Seattle. And we're going to talk to them in just a second, Brad and Donna. And down over there, those people are from St. Louis. So, Brad, I'm going to talk to you because you've been here for a long time. You've been here since 2 this morning. Yes. Why? Uh, I wanted to make sure I could get a good spot and get a good, good view of the final shuttle launch. Why is the shuttle launch so important for you to see? Because I've been doing this since I was a little kid. I have a scrapbook still from I'm 15 or 16 years old. I've been watching it since the 60s. That this is the last launch. I mean, what feeling does that leave you with? Um, sad, but there'll be a new chapter. You know, be, things are going to be coming up. So, so you're hopeful because a lot of people that live in this area kind of think this is kind of a funereal time, that this is the end of the space program. But you don't think that. I think it's a new beginning to a new chapter. I think it's, it's sad, but it's exciting, too. Cool. Well, I hope it takes off, and I hope it doesn't start raining, but I did feel a few drops on my head. The coolest part about this, Allie, you see that truck over there? That truck is full of radio, amateur radio operators from across Florida. They are tapped into NASA's control center, and you can actually hear the countdown out here. So these folks will not only be able to see the launch, they'll be able to hear it, too. Back to you, Allie. I was wondering, when you were when you were talking, I was listening, and I thought, did we have something piped in? Why, why am I hearing the... Uh, the firing center, but that's uh, the firing room, but that's because oh, of that. Oh, it's probably uh, the from stuff them. That's being broadcast. I'm going to go talk to them. I can't hear you. No, it's fine. 
It was all good. All right, uh, Carol, we'll come back and check in with her a, a little later on. Uh, Carol's having fun with uh, with the folks out there getting ready to watch this. Christine, back to you. That's what I always say. I, say, I can't hear. Sorry, Ali, I can't hear you. What did you say? I'm sorry, Ali, I can't hear you. I'll do it. <laughs> But it was cool how many people came from all over. I mean, just all over the country, yeah. they, you know, traveling from faraway places because they want to witness this. Pretty neat. All right. Thanks, Ali. We'll check in with you in a few minutes.